All right. So tonight's Barbarian Hour podcast, we're going to be talking to the Finley Roughnecks head coach. Hey, man, I got beat up pretty bad. Sean Nelson. Coach Nelson, welcome to the Barbarian Hour. But I got beat up pretty bad last Friday night on Twitter by a lot of your alum when I called you guys the Oilers. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know that do you know that story no you got to tell me the story okay so first off I'm not, i gotta finish my intro with you you're in your 26th year at the helm as the head coach one of the longest standing head coach in division two wrestling right now um who's got you beat right now uh, pakora yeah pat pakora and jim akovsky from uh mankato because Mike Denny from what well, used to be Omaha, Maryville, stepped down. And so did Don Henry, actually, from Gannon. So, yeah, those, those, so I would have been, what, the fourth, fifth list? Fifth? No, I just jumped to third. Damn it. I feel old. <laughs> I love it. Um, so you've been there 26 years. You were at Michigan State. How long were you at Michigan State for? Just that one year, 95, when we finished third. Okay. So you guys got a team trophy at Michigan State. Did you go right from Penn State to Michigan State? Because you wrestled at Penn State. You're an All-American at Penn State, right? Right. I went straight from uh, Penn State to Michigan State. I was still competing at the time, but tore a uh, ACL and a hernia all in the same week, uh, working out with Dave Dean and Joe Pentaglio trying to get me ready. Um and uh, yes, yeah, so then I took a year off before I came to Finley. So you got to Finley as the assistant. Was Jeff Fire the head coach when you got there? Yeah, Coach Jeff Fire. I was uh, the University of Finley's first graduate assistant. Got it. So you get there with Jeff Fire. How long were you assistant for? Uh, just one year. One year, and then they threw you right into the fire, huh? Yeah, one year and then jumped head coaching. Were you NAIA then or were you NCAA D2 at that yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. So we were NAIA my first uh, two years. We were in the – so after my first year, which would have been, what, 97, 98, um, basically we had then the next year we had a, wait a year. Uh, Finley was supposed to go to Division two, but we had a little hiccup at our school. So the NCAA said, wait one more year. So officially 2001, I think was our first year actually. Okay. Yeah. I don't like what the whole transition thing, like to go from two to one is the dumbest thing I've ever, it's a four year process and you got to do a yeah. club and Cal Baptist actually just entered their first year. Um, Correct. And, and that was a crazy transition. And, you know, they competed against you guys up until, like, what, 2018, I think? Right. The only thing I don't like about it is because, you know, I mean, I, I get that they want, you know, one, two, whatever, but it's the kids that get hurt in the long run. And then, you know, let's face it, wrestling is a sport where most schools want for a number. And so if you want those numbers, you know, you're going to say, hey, I'm going to recruit Zeb. Zeb, come on, let's wrestle. Oh, by the way, you can't compete for postseason. Well, yeah. that, that doesn't really help your – situation and i don't agree with that but no i hate it I, I hate it bellerman's in the middle of it right now um in um uh kentucky uh with ned shuck and i, I absolutely hate it and it's like really hard because you know they're the covid year and they start transitioning and maybe they're going to get a year knocked off i think it's awful i think it's really bad i think they've got to lower it to, i mean i see a year or two right i get that but like four years right Four years. What? I don't even see the logic behind that, Coach Nelson. It's like, it's just idiotic. It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. No, there's no. I don't think there's a way to defend it. You know what I mean? Like, um, no. okay. I got drugged through the mud pretty bad on Twitter when I said <laughs> Oilers. They beat me up pretty bad. Correct me. I want the record set straight. Literally, you are the University of Finley Oilers. That is literally the name of the Twitter handle for the for the the college. Correct. Okay. However, um, so Coach Jeff Fire, the coach before me, uh, when he took over the program in the 80s, Finley, like if you go back, we've been looking, um, we've been starting to find a little bit more. But back in the day, like actually Finley had wrestling in 1933. They wrestled Oklahoma A&M. 
which is now Oklahoma State. Um, so there's there's records of us, you know, there's wrestling. Well, in the 80s, I guess the uh, program, and I don't know who the coach was before Jeff Fire was really low. And he being a English uh, major uh, literature and something else, he has a master's in, he, he just, hey, I'm gonna call the guys the Roughnecks. Roughneck was somebody that worked on the oil rigs that was a little bit, you know, going to town and blow off some steam. If you look at it, they, they were named the Roughnecks. And it kind of stuck. And then we just kind of, you know, when I took over, I put it on my stuff. We couldn't trademark it or anything like that. But, you know, ask anybody that's, you know, in my 26 years and Jeff Fire's 26 years, and they're going to tell you it's the Roughnecks, not the Oilers. Man, they beat me up really bad. And I, I was firing back with, and I, I know you're the Roughnecks because I remember um, Billy Scherf was an NAI. Oh, yeah, Billy, American. He's an old Harvard, Harvard guy. Harvard. Yeah, he coached my nephew Ian. Billy Scherf's, you know, I've known the guy since I was a kid. He wrestled with my brothers at Oak Harbor. Good guy. Um, but um, I remember always because, you know, he came in and he always had his rough neck stuff on. Great guy. Kid was a state placer at Oak Harbor. Um, you know, I mean, I remember that forever since, I, you know, he would always come in. And then Bubba Tr Taylor transferred. He's a Clyde guy. They're in the Sinesky yep. Bay Conference with Oak Harbor. He transferred from Ohio State to um, Finley. And then I just remember that. And then, man, your 90s teams were just unbelievable. I mean, you had Moran. You had Moran, Karshalava, Karshalava, um, which is which is Carson Karshala's dad. Um, yep. Uh, he is Abkhazian from the Caucasus Mountains. Um, uh, you'll have to go back and watch his episode. It's a, it's a two T-shirt episode. He goes through two T-shirts. <laughs> But you guys have such a strong tradition. You've made these transitions from NAIA to D2. And you, you I, I, my opinion, you guys do more with less. You know, I mean, there were years I've interviewed you. I want to say 2014. You guys had one scholarship when I interviewed you in 2014. Yeah, I think we were 2.5, to be honest with you. But okay. yeah, I remember. But you had an NCAA champ with 2.5 scholarships. The limit's 9.0 in D2. You had a champ that year. How do you do it? Well, we had a champ and we had a runner up in uh, That's Walters. Right. Lost That's right. Walters, uh, West Tiaga guy I, over here. Yeah, I thought he was going to beat uh, Davis that year, too. Yeah, that was the last year. 2014 is the last year that we you interviewed us. Uh, you know, I don't know. We just get the right kids. And it's, it's hard because, you know, back then, you know, in 2014, you know, some of the programs were just up and coming. And now... Not, not that it's flooded, but, and I'm, and I'm happy, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy the growth of wrestling, but you know, when I first started, the Ashland was the only division two school in the state of Ohio. That's why, you know, we were NAI and then we jump up and then it's us in Ashland. And then all of a sudden, you know, Lake Erie adds and guess what, then, you know, here comes Tiffin adds and then Notre Dame adds. And then, you know, uh, even well, even when I started Mercer wasn't even, uh, division two team and so you know you get all these teams and so you know it's it's getting tougher but you know when you talk about that them years you know it was just just finding the right kids and you know academically you know our school's been always pretty strong and uh so you got to find that and it's 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 a lot of hunting you know just trying to find that you know that right zeb miller that's ready for it yeah and that's the thing like i look back on mine i went to kent state but i i always thought like i wanted to go to ashland right and then it turned into, well, this is the place you're going to have to pay the least. You know, I committed to Ohio University, but I probably was a D2 guy. I know that you fight this battle a lot, right? You fight right. the battle of, I'm a D1 guy. Everybody thinks they're a D1 guy. And the crazy thing about you is, you were one of the greatest to ever do it in Ohio high school history. You know, you're on the mural at the Schottenstein Center for the tournament, right? You're one of the best to ever do it, three-time state champion, you go to Penn State, you pay your dues, and you're an All-American. Did you take third the year you All-American? Fourth. You took fourth. Okay. And then I love hearing the weight class. Who is your – who placed the head of you? Who won your weight? So it would have been Brands won it. Uh, LaShawn Charles was second. <laughs> and then I lost to the kid from Oklahoma. Uh -oh. I'm trying to think of his name right now. Something Harrison, because I had lost my wrestle off to Prescott that year 
So I lost the week of EWL. So then I had to jump to 126 that week. Uh, that What you just said, I was talking to Scotty Burnett about it last night because Eric and you, I believe you and Eric Burnett went one, one, and one. Is that true? No. We went, I went one, oh, and one. One, oh, and one. So you got the win. <laughs> Yeah, my and I'm not gonna lie. I tell you that it was the funniest story. We wrestled at Penn State, and he would have been. He's two years ahead of me, so I was a true freshman, and I beat him seven to two. And then we wrestled at Clarion, a dual meet at Clarion with cheerleaders and all this garbage, and we tied. And back then, you could tie. It was garbage. Did they raise both hands? I forget. No, they didn't raise any hand. You just did two, two. You got two team points, two team points. It was stupid. Oh my goodness. What a horrible, awful soccer thing. Uh. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Scotty thought you guys went one, one, and one, but it was one, oh, and one in favor of Sean Nelson. Correct. And it was that the year. So that was your freshman year. And then you all American in, was it 93? Two. 92. Wow. And you were in a really tough spot, man, because then Abby came in. Abby took fourth in 93. He got lost to Adam DeSabato for third and fourth. And that was when he went four, three, two, one, right? Like, but right. that would have been your senior year when he came in. Uh or junior yeah, year. No, junior year. Wow. So you had Abby, Jeff Prescott. Those are the guys you had to work out with at Penn State. Bob Truby, uh, Kerry Cola was there. Oh, that's year. right. Um, and then it was the Hughes boys in Sunderland, and then it just got bigger and bigger. I forgot the Hughes brothers are there too. Okay, so wait a minute. Cola was only there with you for a year, right? Two, technically, yeah. Two, okay. Wow. Dude, that is wild to think about it. So you of all people, you know what a blue chip number one guy in the country looks like, right? So you're fighting the battles that all the D1 coaches are, but you were the guy that was never looking at Finley. You know, you were the guy that was Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, Clarion, because Clarion was really good then. That was what your your eyes were set in. How do you fight that fight now in the recruiting? And when a kid tells you I'm D1, do you think like maybe I'll catch him on the rebound or you just move on? How do you work with that? Well, that's the tough part. You know, you hope that you've had some kind of connection with the kid coach or family in some way, shape or form. And, you know, sometimes you don't. And sometimes, you know, you and I know best that, you know, I mean, it's, it's not like the kid can't go and wrestle division one, but maybe he's suited for a better, smaller atmosphere school. I mean, look at, uh, you know, the head coach at Tiffin, you know, I'll throw him some props, you know, Tony Guerra, you know, he's my nephew now. And, um, you know, he's a one-time fourth placer. Uh, we dueled to Iowa, you know, he beat Morningstar. I mean, how does that happen? You know, how does that happen? You know, and, but he wanted a smaller school. He, he, I think it actually came down between us and Indiana for him. And I, I really honestly don't think that he would have had the same success you know, four-time All-American, two-time national champ, three-time finalist, if he picks a bigger school just because of, you know, and I'm not putting them down. That's where I wrestle. But I, I just think that some of the some of the kids don't realize, you know, at the end of the day, we all want results. But it's the time that you have during those results. You know, if it's miserable and you never make it and you finally do or, you know, you have a good time – you know, and not good time as in partying, but a good time. And, you know, you see some results, you know, it's just like, you know, you go to Kent state, you know, and maybe you go to us and, you know, you beat the Kent state guys, but when you're at Kent state, you don't, I don't know that I can't explain that. That's the one thing I can't explain, but you know, it's just about having the, the relationships, you know, I think it's, I think our, our world has got cutthroat in, you know, I, you know, to be honest with you, it was Finley or Oklahoma when Spates was the coach and Manning was the assistant coach and I loved it there, but there was something that drew me to Finley and I just didn't want that, you know, being at a division one school. Yeah. Well, I thought it's crazy. I lost a lot of relationships. It's crazy to think about it 
Well, yeah, because you don't choose Oklahoma. And, you know, it's so cutthroat, like you're saying, man. It is so cutthroat. Uh, but, like, think about this. You get to drive right up to your facility now. You're not dealing with a student body where there's what, – what, what's there at Penn State? 50,000? 50, 50,000 kids? When you went there, probably 40,000 kids, right? Something crazy like that? Right. I wouldn't even know anymore. You know, like Oklahoma, a similar massive school. We're talking 30, 40, 50,000 kids, right? What is the enrollment at the University of Finley in Finley, Ohio? I think it's like 35 undergrad and 3,500. Yeah. You know, I think there's another like 1,500 grad PhD kids. Yeah. And you pull right up to your, your practice. You're not parking in a parking deck and you don't have to deal with parking people telling you you're not dealing with all dude, you think about it. Look, like you go, like, even if you go to like the mid majors, you go to Kent state, you go to, you go to Cleveland state, you go to like the mid majors, you're still parking in a parking deck. You got to walk all into through all these buildings. You got to go in a parking deck. Just think about that. Right? Like you're not doing that. You're driving to and from half hour commute for you from your house to your, to your, your job. You're not parking in a parking deck. You're probably right next to the facility. You're not fighting 50,000 kids, you know, that are all, you know, you got a bunch of commuters. It's not like that there. It's like awesome. It's intimate, right? Yeah. That's what I say. You know, I mean, that's one of the few things like, it's not like I didn't have a chance to leave early on or anything like that, but you know, that's, that's the difference is like, you know, I just don't see my kids outside of, you know, or inside the wrestling room. You know, I see them on campus, you know, I see them with other things, you know, they'll call, Hey, coach Taylor, you know, my car broke down. Can you come, you know, uh, take a look or something. And, you know, you know, within all the rules that we have to follow, which some of them are just stupid to me, but you know, I mean, you, you are there to help that kid succeed. And, you know, if he gets his goals, great, you know, you've done your job, but if he didn't, you know, it's not for lack of trying. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a degree and it's the relationships that you make going forward. You know, I mean, I, I guarantee if you a lot of, ask a lot of these coaches, you know, if they could get rid of the cutthroat part of it and actually have a relationship with these kids, you know, but everybody cares about the wins and losses anymore. And, you know, after 26 years, you know, don't get me wrong. My first five, 10 years, boy, I was, Hey, win, lose, you know, but you know, as you're getting older, it's like, well, what is a success story? You know, that Zeb Miller was struggling and we got him a degree and now he's got in the real world, but maybe he never was an all American. You know, that's still a success story to me. I'm sorry. I don't care who tells me different. Yeah. I think like you're saying, so, so much focus on the wins and the losses as opposed to I have a degree. Now I can be, a teacher. I have a degree. Now I can uh, work in management positions. I have a degree and I can go on and uh, get into medical school. Right. Um, I have a degree. I can run whatever business, right? Like I have an MBA. I have this, I have that. I don't think people um, stress enough value on what the actual purpose of college is. And that's getting a degree. Right. And that's like ultimately to the root of what you're saying. Like we want kids to get degrees. We're not here to wrestle and be a wrestling factory you want to win. I get that. But like the degree is the most ultimate thing about it. Right. Here's the other thing. Think about this. The name image likeness isn't going to hit you guys. Like it's going to hit the mid majors. Right. You guys are not the same battles as the name image likeness is a mess, man. It's a mess. I'm talking to all these guys. It is like, you talk to John Stutzman at Buffalo. You talk to Jim Anderson, Josh Moore. You talk about these guys. And if they develop someone, guess what? Guess what's going to happen the next year? Guess what's going to happen over the summer? Someone's going to poach that kid and they're going to lose him. I don't think you guys are fighting that battle, are you? No, but, you know, it is it is amazing, you know, and and that's one of the things that, you know, and and I guess I should change with the times. I'm old school. Like, I don't take a lot of transfer. And I got, you know, my fair share too, but, you know, most of them have like three to four years left. But, uh, you know, it's not like I'm going out to get that kid those kids are probably actively seeking us. And it, it, the, the problem that I see with the name image and likeness and the other things is, you know, it's going back to, um, and I used to, it's funny. I, I taught a class, a history class at uh, Finley and, you know, it was back like the renegade days back when, you know, uh, football and whatever ran everything. And, you know, they got to stay on the dorms because they did a smoking commercial. Like, and I'm talking way, way back in the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're better at, and you're better schools, 
and that's that's kind of where it's going to like in Ohio State yeah I mean that's a great brand name so they're gonna have a lot well you know they're taking away the the parody and I don't like that well I mean to your point look at your alma mater right now I mean your alma mater is they're they're slaying it I don't think here's what I'll say about Penn State and I know you're a Penn State alum and you got to cheer for them at some level or, or have something for them. I mean, that's your alma mater, right? Um, I don't think Penn State's paying guys out big, like a lot, like, like Iowa's paying guys out or Oklahoma State's paying guys out or Michigan's paying guys out or you know, even if it's Ohio State, right? I don't think they're paying them out like that. I think they're, they're hooking them up, but I think the guys want to go there. They want to win. I think the guys want to go. And I think the guys built like this ultimate system. You get the superior talent. You're not pounding them into the ground. Those guys aren't, I don't think those guys are going and doing stadiums at 6 a.m. and then coming back at three o'clock and wrestling this practice where dudes are just getting murdered. I don't, I don't think they're doing that. I think he, I think the guy's got thoroughbreds and they manage them right. I th- that's just my opinion. Right. I, I'm, I'm speculating. I've never been in the room. I don't have a plan. I don't, you know what I mean? But like, I think that's what that guy's doing. He's getting superior talent at Penn State. And I mean, that's what I see from the outside looking in. How do you, what do you think? No, I, I agree. I think he's cultivating a good, um, like, here's your thing. And, you know, I'm growing this and I'm cultivating it. It's funny because now I live in the country. So talk a lot about farming. Cultivating, but, you know, yeah, growing things. You know, and, and that's true, you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, I can give this one so much attention or I give all of these so much attention, you know, and it might not be the same amount as this one, but, and I think that that's what he does. He does a good job of that. And, you know, like I said, I, I still have a little bit of contacts back there and I, I haven't heard too, too much about, like you said, you know, the, the money deals and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they'll, they'll come, they'll be there no matter what, but like you said, it's not like a thriving where they, that's what they're pushing to get kids to come there. I don't think they're stroking $200,000 checks. Like I've heard some of these other things are doing. I don't think that's a thing, man. I think that dude's like, yeah, we got this. I, I, he's probably got like a set amount, right? I don't know what that is, right? I'm speculating. And, hey, this is what we can do for you in camps or whatever it is, right? And if you want to be a part of one of the greatest teams that's going to break 170 points, come on here, right? I, I think that's, right. that's what he has to offer. I think their culture is, like, really healthy culture. I don't think it's a, a toxic culture by any means. I think the guy is just operating within the rules, right? That are, But I don't think he's stroking $200,000 checks. I could be wrong. But I don't think I am. No, I, I um, you know, it's funny is I still talk to, uh, so the trainer that I had, Dan Monthly, is still the trainer today. There's some, um, I talked to my old uh, academic advisor. She just retired. And, you know, I don't hear any crazy stories. I can tell you that. I mean, so, I mean, good for them. Like you said, you know, some people got to, I think that's what we're trying to do too at Finley is, you know, I mean, it's funny now I have five coaches out there. We were talking about it when I seen you at the track meet and uh, you know, I, I think they're hopefully going to do it the same way and do it right. It's crazy because in D2, what's wild about D2, it's just like, I'll use uh, grand Valley state, right? It's one of your former guys. Joey Simcoe is one of the best guys yeah. to ever go to Finley. I think what they're putting into it, dude, you can be competitive right away in D2. It's not like you're going to have to climb this ladder and do this Cal Baptist crawl through the mud and get your first qualifier, little rock, right? Like they're not going to have to do that. You can jump right into the trophy hunt. If you have a good transfer or two and really good freshman, I think that grand Valley set up like that. That's just my opinion. Right. But like you can do that D2. You cannot do that in D1. I think that we can both, right? Like they could be, a threat right away couldn't they yeah i'd give them at least two years and yeah i mean because you're gonna run into some freshmen and then you get your program rolling and stuff like that but you know from what we hear you know facility wise i mean grand valley is the size of a division one school it's you 20, know, so, 20 000 students right so most of you know if you look at a lot of your division two schools say not central Oklahoma, not central missouri not grand valley most of your schools are student driven they're not. So they're going to have a good start compared to like what we had to build. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I think they could be competitive immediately. 
And the other thing is you guys have, I don't know if you have it. I know Jeff Breeze had it at Lake Erie, but I know that the way it works, like you just said, it's, it's student driven. So what that means is, and I don't know if you guys, I can't speak to Finley. You can probably, um, what Lake Erie does is they have, I got to have a certain amount of kids bringing in a certain amount of revenue. And then I can justify giving out X amount of scholarships. Do you guys do a similar thing to that coach Nelson? No, we don't believe it or not. We'd have nothing. You know what I'm like, talking about though, right? There are schools that have that we, model. We have no incentive. If I bring in 50 kids or I bring in, you know, 60 kids, we, we don't have at Finley. We don't do that. You know, they just expect you to, here's what I'm going to do. You know, you're going to bring in these kids and go from there. That's wild to me. When Jeff explained that to me, so the, the okay, so the thing there essentially, and I know that Heidelberg does it right. You got to have a massive roster, and that's D three. They don't even give um, athletics grant and scholarship, right? Right. They have a lot of the D threes are it's student driven, right? You want to have as many students as you can get onto the roster so that you're bringing in tuition money and room and board money to justify why you have a team for that, right? That's that's literally when you say student-driven, that's what a lot of them are, right? Correct. So, I mean, let's face it, like at a school like ours, you know, I mean, don't just don't even pick on wrestling, pick on, you know, at the whole school. Like they have, this is what costs to run the school. So this is how many athletes, kids you're going to need to run that school. So, I mean, some people like to do it uh, by numbers or by you know, Hey, the more you get, the more we'll give you. But, you know, Finley has been pretty straight up from all the years that I know. Um, you know, like you've been in this for so long, right? You, you know, you started at North Royalton, you're a four time state placer, three time state champ. Um, wrestling's the hardest way to do it, man. In my opinion, like I got a seven year old kid and like, my biggest thing is like, I'm just trying to get him to love the sport of wrestling as a 50. What are you 52 now? Almost, not quite. <laughs> You're 51. How do you still yeah. love wrestling how you loved it when you were a little kid in North Royalton, Ohio, Northeast Ohio? I think it's a different love. Um, so, like, me, like, I mean, I still, you know, I mean, our bodies aren't the same, so we've, we've changed a lot. But, you know, for me, if I get a kid like you, Zeb, and I seen you, you know, you struggle, and I get you over that hump, and I see that happiness that you get, like, that's worth it. Like that is what your job is about. And again, it, it might not be a national champ. It might be an all American. It might be, you know, uh, you know, that first big win over a D one guy or whatever it may be. But, you know, for me, the, the thing that keeps us going is, is to see that kid uh, want to keep driving to be, and, you know, and even to see, like, like I said, you know, Boomer at Lake Erie, you know, Joey at Glen Grand, uh, Grand, bleh, Grand Valley, Tony at Tiffin, Goble at King, um, you know, Ryan Ludwig at Northern Illinois, you know, those are all my guys. So when I see them do well, like I'm happy, even though if it's against me, you know, at the same point, at the end of the day, you know, you got to think, you know, you molded those guys in some way, shape or form, or you hope you did. And when they succeed, then you kind of feel like you succeed a little bit. Ryan Ludwig, speak of that, speaking of that guy, you know, he's had a good last, you know, his last five years have been dynamite, right? He's done a great job in um, DeKalb, Illinois, at Northern Illinois. Um, my mother-in-law taught at the high school he went to uh, Ch in Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah. And I Chelsea told you Michigan. the crazy story about the school shooting. And he told yeah. the story on, on this podcast about how the SWAT team was in the building. They had a dual meet that night and he was in cutting weight or whatever. And the SWAT team rolled up on him. It was a crazy thing because they had a teacher that killed killed one of the administrators and like went you know went insane obviously. And he was a part of that. But my mother in law taught at that school, and Ryan went there. And that's like a thing. I like I remember asking him. I'm like, dude, how do you get to Finley, Ohio? And I think he might have been a one time state champ in Michigan, maybe. Correct. Yep. And 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 like. He goes to you guys and it's like such a, it's a crazy thing because nobody in Michigan where he's from Ann Arbor even knows where Finley is and it's not that far away. Right. Right. Isn't that crazy? How do you get a guy like that? You know, so I came in Ryan's sophomore year, uh, 
but Jeff Fire, you know, he was just, he threw his name out. And Jeff Fire actually was from, um, you know, his dad used to run Joe Lewis Arena back in the day. No way. And then, you know, his dad came down here and, um, you know, opened up a bar and an oil exchange and all this stuff in Finley. And, you know, so he had some connections still back in uh, Michigan. So th- there it is. There it is. I get it now. I mean, what, once again, such a relationship sport, but think about what that guy's going through right now. What, what Ryan Ludwig is going through right now. He has a guy who he builds from California on the team and Olenek and they get the guy and make the guy an all American. And, and you know, it's just the system, not a, not a dig on the kid, more of a dig on the system. And he goes to name image like this money and goes to Oklahoma state, right? Like that's tough. But from what I've seen from that guy, he can coach. The guy can coach. He understands wrestling. He understands the relationship out of it. He understands what you got to do to win at that level, right? And um, I'm kind of excited to see how they bounce back from that because that's a huge loss for them. You know what I mean? I think it is too. You know, I was kind of, I was a little bit pissed. I'm not going to lie. I mean, only because, you know, you, you get a guy that, and you know, poured his heart and soul into that kid to make him. And I think that's where Ryan is, you know, where compared to some of the other big schools and I will never say any names, but you know, I mean, you know, he had to actively go get that kid. It's not like that kid said, I'm, you know, I'm going to Northern Illinois. That's my choice. Well, and then, you know, he actively goes, gets that kid. He actively puts all the time and effort into him. He gets him to be on that podium. And then it, it feels like he just got kicked in the, you know, what's, and you know, what? see you later. And I'm not digging on that kid, but you know, that's kind of how you feel all the time. And it, it's troublesome to know that. I mean, let's face it. If you had a real job and you said, you know what, the heck with you, I'm going to go over to this company and then you don't like that company. You, you're damn not going to keep jumping companies. I guarantee it. People are going catches to up that, oh, what did you do? Yeah. Right. And yeah, it catches up real so quick. Why are, why are we allowing the kids to do that? I get it. You know, a coach needs to be held responsible. And I think that was way back when it comes to football and things like that. You know, okay, we, we do violations. I'll just leave so I don't get in trouble. But the school gets penalized and so do the kids, but not that coach. And uh, that's that's the fail in the system right there. Boom. So then it opens up all this other stuff. It's just crazy can of worms, man. It's like, it's like this Pandora's box of like, what, what do we do? What did we do here? Did we just right. ruin college sports? You know what I mean? Like, and I like, and I, and I get the kids making money off their name, their image and their likeness, but I didn't, I don't know if they thought it was going to be what it was going to be. You know, like, I don't know if they could have envisioned that it was going to be kids are staying in college longer because they don't want to go to the NFL because the rookie contracts a pay cut, right? Like that blew my mind. When I heard that, I was like, Oh my God, there's a couple guys who've said that like, yeah, I want to, I'm going to stay another year because they pay me so much to be at Georgia or LSU or Alabama that, that blew my mind or Ohio state. Right. As we know, but, um, well, and, and you just, you just nailed it right there. It's all about and the grass is greener over there. So, and I can get more if I do this, but is that going to make you a better person? Is that going to make you like, I, I guarantee, you know, and I would love to go back and it will we'll be probably dead, but go back and look at all these kids that jump ship. Did they really do better? Were their stats better? Whether it be football or wrestling, you know, I mean, you know, some of the guys, you know, if you're an all American, I mean, you're obviously an all American, you know, uh, and so if I transfer schools, I'm, I, I should be an all American again, yeah. no matter what school I go to. Yeah. And so I like, saw some of that. I saw some of what you're talking about. Guys were really good at this one school. They left and their results weren't better. Right. And that's, a, I think to your point, like, did you go for the right reason? Did you leave? Cause you wanted to really be better. Or did you leave? Cause they paid you more money. That's a big thing. Correct. That's crazy. And that's not always the right decision. Like you said, grass is always greener, right? Right. And I guess, you know, I mean, when you get to our age um, and you're not that far behind me, um, you know, you, you have a different outlook on life. You really do. Absolutely. And, and you look at these kids and you look at these wrestlers and it's like, you know, is, is it really about the glory and the name? Is it, 
or is it about the process again these kids like i'm so proud you know a lot of my kids at finley you know, are doing very well you know i don't know how many we got a couple doctors now we got a couple i don't know four or five lawyers we got you know it's pretty cool you that's know when fulfilling. you look back. that's fulfilling okay yeah so so you talk about tony at um Stephen. First off, I've never heard a negative thing about Tony Guerra. I've never heard anybody say boo about that guy. So I think that right there speaks to his character, right? That guy is as solid of a human as I met. Um, and he, that guy's paid his dues in the D2, D3 coaching ranks, man. That guy lives in North Toledo, I want to say, in the Washington Township by like Whitmer. And he, yeah. Just, I've heard, yeah. Right? He lives in, like, North Toledo, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay. He's got, like, what's he got? Four or five kids. Four. Four boys. Four kids, right? He was driving to Ashland at one point. I was like, dude, how do you do that? He's like, you wear a car out real quick. Then he had the head coaching job at Defiance. Then he gets the assistant job at Tiffin, and then he takes over the next year, right? Yeah. Right, like think about what that guy has done in driving. <laughs> that guy's paid his dues, wouldn't you agree? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, but I think ultimately, you know, his his goal was to be a head coach, and you know, it's just it's a perfect example of doing what it takes. Like I said, I mean, he was a GA for me for one year. Wow. You know, and then you know he was going to try the high school world and he did a great job and yeah. then you know, yeah, your guy boomer your guy boomer moved a lot and did and paid the price right yeah he did too you know what is it? cleveland state buffalo i think it was he at bloomsburg bloomsburg dakota wesleyan oh yeah 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 legends of gold this guy has been everywhere so those guys, man, they've earned it. You know, those guys have, like, I, I call it crawling through the mud. I'd say that's crawling through the mud. Well, I think that, um, I don't know what's going on in my video. Hold on. Um, what I think is funny is a lot of people think that you use Division Two as a stepping stone. But to be honest with you, how many Division Two coaches go on and do Division One? Not a lot. You know why? Because... I think division two is, is where it's at, you know, the relationships, like we talked about earlier and stuff like that. So I think a lot of kids will do whatever it takes to get into the division two ranks. Cause there's a little bit more, I, th I feel like there's loyalty. I feel like there's, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like there's one, that's one thing I cannot put a finger on, but you know, like a boomer, look at, he was, at, he's at all those big schools. He could have stayed at big schools. You know, he landed a job, and I guarantee in 15 more years, guess what? Zeb will probably be talking about him. I love it. <laughs> and he's still I love be there. It, Do you realize my the school where I teach is, is like a mile from Lake Erie College? Oh, I, I was wondering. Yeah, I teach at Riverside, and Riverside is Painesville Township. He's in, yeah, Painesville. You're in Painesville. Yeah. So, and then I just live like when I do their duels, I come home get my kids eat dinner and then go back up and shoot the duels. So you got to understand man, when I don't have to travel four hours or six hours, you know, easy that makes life on me. And I, like, and that's what oh, I look at in life, man. And yeah, like somebody was like, Hey, you going to the Ohio state duel tonight? I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to Lake Erie college. Really? Why? Why, why are you at the Ohio state duel? And I'm like, it's, it's five hours of driving. Yeah. It's five hours of driving. It's five hours of driving. And I'm, I'm like, the Big Ten's great, but why would I do this when I? Why would I do that? Do they, they don't need me. Ohio State don't need me. Lake Erie College needs me. I think. I think. I think I can help them out and help move the needle for those guys. I like yeah. that. I think you have. Yeah, I like that. But you know what I mean. I like those guys. I like what they're doing. I liked uh, Jeff Breeze. I liked Hoogan Boom. I think they do a great job there. So, and you know, one of the proximities, like you know, the Cleveland State one, same thing. You know, Cleveland State, Kent State, they're all within half hour of my house. Why wouldn't I help those programs out? Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry my big that. thing with all your guys, right. Okay. Um, 
you were telling some crazy stories the other night. I know you got a lot of crazy Finley stories. Give me some insanity from the wrestling room at Penn State. Like we said, Hughes brothers came along. Colette was there. You were there. Abby was there. Jeff Prescott was there. Troy Sunderland was there. Perry McCoy was there. You had some all-time greats on your team, right? When I just say those right. names, a lot of people are like, I think a lot of people, like those guys were really good. You were in that era of Penn State. Were you guys runner-up in one of those years? Yeah, the years I was there, we were third, third, second, third. Oh, my God. Yeah, we just screwed up. And, you know, we were catching Iowa, but we just we never got over the top. But um, I'll tell you two quick stories. One will be a little bit longer. Two will just sum it up. So I'm a true freshman, come in there, and, you know, um, one of our coaches, Hachiro um, Oishi, um, he used to bring the Japanese team used to come over train sometimes and you know whatever from nippon and uh so the first day you know i'm i'm not first day but i'm i'm in there wrestling and he's like i want you to wrestle this japanese guy i'm okay i look at him he doesn't look like much and we start wrestling and god i can't you know i'm like god i barely touching this guy's leg and i'm like this is ridiculous like i'm no slouch you know i mean hell and uh this guy's throwing me around the room and I'm getting like pissed off. Like, you know, I mean, I'm, I want to win. And, uh, Hachiro says something to him in Japanese and he starts turning up a whole nother notch and I've never felt in my life. And, uh, I get mad and, uh, there's a volleyball sitting there and I kick it and, uh, I'm pissed off and I go out of the room and, you know, the guy I'm wrestling is Yuji Takata. <laughs> and if you look up Yuji Takata, um, he was like a four time world champ, you know. He was the last person that he actually tech tech fall Bella Glazov before he went on his stair. And I didn't understand, you know, and and you know, here I am, this young freaking because I was only 17 when I went to college, I was young and uh, just couldn't understand how I could physically get beat down by somebody that bad I mean, in the it's wrestling room. When they say there's levels to this, that's what they're talking about, right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's wild to me. And and I love that I love that he poured it on you and you didn't know it hit you. I love it. <laughs> no, and I think he was trying to prove a point. So my point being is, you know, when you stepped into that room, you know, people talk about like, you know, I have to have talks with my kids. Hey, well, you know, I was having a bad day, coach, you know, this and that. And I'm like, you know and I'll refrain from swearing. <laughs> I'm like, bad day. I'm like, you guys don't know what it freaking is to have a bad day. I go, you go into that room and you're not at the top of your game and you got to wrestle Sanchiro and you got to wrestle freaking uh, Cola and you got to freaking go at Hughes and you got to go at freaking Prescott and Truby. Yeah. You have a bad day there. You're having a really bad day <laughs> and people don't get that. No, they don't. When you're in a room like that, where the, like we're talking some all time greats of NCAA wrestling. I mean, we're talking guys that could wrestle on these Penn State teams now. That's not what I'm saying is a zero exaggeration because people are so insane with their recency bias. You know what I mean? They only care right. about what's now, right? Oh, no, oh, RBY. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nico Magalutis would have killed Jeff Prescott. Well, well, I, I don't know. If, I don't know because didn't I... Prescott beat Zappadol in the finals. Yeah, Zappadol only had five losses. Oh my God. In college. And three of them were Penn State guys. Two to Prescott, one to me. Uh you beat Zap at all? Yeah. Oh my God. Eric Burnett told me a story. Chad Zapital beat the brakes off of him at the NCAA tournament one year. Yeah. That's <laughs> Chad Zapital was really, really good. Like one of the greatest guys to never win an NCAA title. I feel comfortable yeah. saying that. Three-time runner-up? Yeah, I, I would say you're right. I mean, you just said he had five losses. Three of them were in the NCAA finals. Yeah. It's pretty, good. It's pretty good, right? Um, yeah. All right. You had one other good one about Penn State. Which one? I was just telling you about the Yuji Takata. And, yeah, uh, but you told, me, you told me you had another good one for me. No, I was just saying that that summed it up. Like, you oh. know, when you, when you talked about having a bad room yes. or a bad day. That's a bad day when you can't, you know, you're not feeling it and you got to go against those guys. Cause believe me, 
you know, somebody was going to be on and somebody's going to be off that day. Yeah. They're just so good. They're so good. And they're just like, we're talking about guys who are good at the international level too, guys who can, who can just absolutely roll. And um, what was it like a young Kerry Kolak coming into that room? Cause he was like the phenom and the, you know, a guy who went to Midlands and made noise as a high schooler. He was really good. Right. Like, what was it like having him in as a, as a true freshman? Oh, have a cola. No, he was, you know, I mean, we had wrestled when, believe it or not, me and him had wrestled at the Ohio State Fair. Oh, really? Back in the day. Yeah. Um, and then he came in and, you know, I mean, he was, he was, he was a freak, you know, he's super strong, super flexible, a little different, you know, but uh, like anybody, you know, you have your challenges and he had his challenges too in the practice room, you know, because you know, you had Hughes, you had Sonny, you had Sunderland if you wanted to go up. You had, you know, I mean, there was always somebody to wrestle. I mean, we wrestled a lot. We drilled a lot, you know, and stuff like that. And um, But it was so dynamic to have, like, everybody had something good to bring. You know, like a Chiro or a Sancho, I'm sorry, it was really good on his feet. You know, if you wrestled Cole a lot, you, if you did not – finish your takedown you were in trouble you know like it had to be very solid if you even thought about taking that kid down because he was so flexible but yet strong you know i was used to pride myself on top you know that's how we grew up in north royalton and you know i mean until the more boys came on i think i was second on the pin list wow you you were that much of a pinner in college so yeah so you know i mean everybody brought something dynamic to that room and it wasn't all the same, which was great. Yeah. And it, here's the wildest thing about it. You wrestled two years with uh, Kerry McCoy. Right? Yeah. And Kerry actually, you know, his freshman year, you would have thought, yeah, this kid's not going to make it. I think he was true freshman year. He wrestled 97. And I want to say, I was just looking at the book. I ran into one of my old uh, roommates. The other day he was doing business in Michigan. He came down and I hadn't seen him in 20 some years. I think he was like 14 and 17, like something ridiculous his freshman year. You have to look it up. I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, I remember but because he was in that weight class with Rex Holman, Joel Sherritt, uh, Davison was third. Uh, Hanji was right. Dude, that weight. I looked at that weight one year. It had like Dan Henderson, uh, What's his name? Um, the Oregon State guy, world champion. Um, Les uh, Les Gutches, Gutches. Yeah. Dan Henderson, like Jeff Monson was in the weight. Like oh, yeah, that all was time stacked. great guys in the weight. I'm like, oh my God, what a weight class. And that weight you were in, a, um, when you were at 126 and Terry Brands beat, um, wait, it was Terry, right? Or is it Tom? Terry. It was Terry. Terry beat Terry. Sean Charles, right? Right. Wow. Who finished below you? Who did, did you rough? Did you make the semifinals that year? No. So I screwed up. I lost to the kid and this is where the weight thing killed me. Cause I weighed in at one twenty three. at you wrestling. Were an, you were an 18 pounder. You were an 18 right. pounder at the NCAA champ at 118 Jeff Prescott. Right. So I lost to Babic Muhammad, who's a four time all American Oregon state. Right. I lost him seven, five. I was beating him and I would have wrestled. Uh, if I would have won that in the quarters, I would have wrestled LaShawn. And, um, and I lost to him and then I dropped down and I came back and I beat Hirsch. I pinned Jody Staler. And then I lost for third and fourth. So wait, you did have a blood round match. Cause you lost in the quarters. Yeah. yeah. Who'd you, who's your blood round? I want to say it was, it was either David Hirsch from Cornell or it was Porter from Edinburgh. Wow. That listen, those are like landmine matches. Like where that, that dude, those guys can get you. You know what I mean? Like that, that's wild to think about it. So that's, you had to beat one of those guys in the run in the blood round, round of 12 to, to get in the top eight. And then obviously um, what did you guys take that year? Third or second? That year we were third. You're third. Oh my God. And th those are some of those like all time great wheelhouse, Iowa, Oklahoma State rivalries. 
Um, Actually, Arizona State was stacked back then, if you remember. Arizona State won in 88. They were the first team ever west of the Rocky Mountains to win under Bobby Douglas. They were really good then. But like you're saying, like 88 to early 90s, yeah, they were really good too. Um, Oklahoma State was obviously really good. And then that was when uh, Pat Smith started winning too. Correct. But he's younger. Yeah. I just like love it. I love like, because that's my nostalgia. I remember I went to the 93 uh, Big Ten Championships in Columbus at St. John's. And that was when, uh, that was your guys' first year in the Big Ten. Oh, God, don't even bring that up. I that frickin- was crazy. That was crazy yep. because then Yasha Yetz and uh, Colat got a like, crazy fight. Mm-hmm. And didn't Colat choke him out? Yeah, supposedly choked him out and pinned him. And then when then Yasha woke up, it, and then the ref said no and then restarted the match, which just pissed off everybody. They are like, wait, did you not just call a pin? And I'm like, well, no, yeah, we called the pin, but he was out, so we can't call it. Oh, it was, I remember that. And I remember which tunnel it was by, too. It was crazy. It's just there's some home cooking there in Columbus, right? <laughs> well, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said it. I said it. I just thought it was odd. I've never yes. seen that happen. It's called home cooking. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I want to talk about the D2 tournament. I want to talk about the D2 NCAA tournament because. Um, and I want to talk about D2 in general. You can tell me or add to this or correct me, whatever you feel. I feel like division one is on the road to men's gymnastics. I'm going to say that again, and I'll explain what I mean by that. I feel like division one wrestling is on the road to division one, or it's all just one division. Now it's on the road to NCAA gymnastics, men's gymnastics. You know what I'm talking about. I do. Means there's, I think there's 30, 30, 28 or 32, something like that. I don't even have the exact number. There might, if there's 40 teams, I'd be shocked. Right. Right. With this name, image, likeness, you're, you're, you're leaving all the mid majors out of it. I, I, I feel like the future of wrestling at the college level is the D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO level. But, with the explosion we've seen in NCAA D2, I really feel to the point that it's for NCAA D2. And in women's, you got to throw women's wrestling in there because right. it's, you know, they're adding programs. But I feel like NCAA Division II is the, the future of wrestling. I say this to all the guys that I bring on to, the, 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 to all my shows that I do. Is NCAA Division II uh, the future of wrestling in the United States of America for folk style at college level? I, I honestly agree with you there. Like I, when the stuff, when I started in 97, we had 30 some division two schools. We are up to 70. <laughs> We're adding five more next year. Now it's taken 26 years. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't see it slowing down. Um, what I think is very interesting. And I don't think a lot of people understand is so NAIA has a different set of rules than does NCAA. NAI gives out scholarships. Okay. So if you're a model school and you want to go from uh, NAI to a NCAA school, it's easier to go division two because you can still keep your scholarships and whatever than it is to go division three. Now division three has more schools at this point, but I think we're catching very fast. And I think you're right. Our model is doing very well in my eyes. And, you know, and, you know, as a coach, you get mad because, you know, not that it gets watered down, but now I got to fight with all these other kids to, and, and programs to recruit against. But at the end of the day, you know, I'll never say anything bad. I mean, I think that's a good thing. Didn't you guys have, um, was it Augustana, South Dakota? Am I saying that right? Is, is it, what is the name of the school? Augustana, yep. Augustana. Were they going to transfer up to D1? Or they something? were going to try, but it, yeah. they're, it was not going to work. Um, they're a very small school also, Weird. around 4,000-some students. And um, 
you know, I don't think a lot of people understand what it takes to be division three, two, or one. I think they think it's student population and it's not, you know, and I think a lot of people need to understand it. Look at that. Look at the university of Miami. Okay. In Florida, look at their population and why are they in division one? They offer so many sports and that's how you go to different divisions. And then within the divisions, then you give out scholarships. You don't, and that's how you set them apart from two, three, and one, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, so I think division two is doing it the right way. And I like it. it. And I listen, the tournament I went to at public hall in Cleveland. I love the parody. I love the yeah. amount of qualifier. The parody was the biggest thing for me. Like anyone could win the weights. Um, Sergeant won the weight at 125. He beat an Augustana guy, TJ North, didn't he? Yeah, correct. Yeah, he hit him with the little, uh, his little dump, his little like yep. arm dump. Boom, like, and he, went, he went for the killer half right on the edge of the mat. He wanted the ball game. He tried. Why not? I just watched that match recently and um, I was like, yeah, man, that is awesome. And then, like you said, Joey Davis beat uh, Walters. West Yaga guy, a local guy, because West Yaga is the next district north of us here where I live. I live in the right. Kansas district. Um, but, like, yeah, it was awesome. But the biggest thing I saw was you'd have these, like, number – it wasn't just, like uh, – there's just it's just not that in Division One, man. It's just not that. The Sacred Heart guy is not beating the Penn State guy. No. But I'll tell you what, the Grand Valley guy can beat the Central Oklahoma guy. Right, Correct. like the, the Finley guy can beat the uh, what uh, can beat the St. Cloud guy. You know what I mean? Like, I like that. I I like. I think that's awesome. Um, and it's just like the, everyone's got a chance. It's just like the Sacred Heart guy. No one's giving that guy a chance. The Cleveland State guy probably isn't gonna beat the Minnesota guy. You know what I mean? Like everybody knows that they love it with it if it does happen, but it just doesn't. The deck right. is so stacked against the mid majors, against the Big Ten, Big Twelve, and you know to a degree the the Eastern Intercontinent uh, Inter, uh, Intercollegiate Wrestling Association, the IWA. Like it's it's wild to look at the SoCon, right? Like the SoCon, they're they're at a huge disadvantage. And then when you get to the yeah. tournament, right? You got you got Cornell's got over a thousand people, right? Oklahoma State's got eighteen hundred people. Iowa's got. 3,300 fans. Penn State's got 3,000 fans, right? Like, you're wrestling the fan base. The refs rough it different, man. The refs rough it different. I'm not wrong. I know I'm not wrong. It's crazy. No, you're not, no, you're not wrong on that one. That's that's comical you said that one, though. Why? Why is it comical? Uh, because, you know, like, so we went out to uh, St. Louis and wrestled Maryville, McKendry out there, and we ended up having a D1 ref and we were talking about some stuff before the match started and he flat out freaking said, depend on, you know, who's wrestling and who's refing, um, you know, how he, um, how he officiates basically, it's unreal. you know, and I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. It's unreal. And, yeah. And it was just amazing to me to hear somebody like say that. And yeah. By any means, this guy is a good ref, too. And I don't think it was him. He was just saying it in general how, you know, when you're in that heat of the moment kind of situation, how things change. And I'm like, why? Why do they have to change? Oh, here, I mean, I'm pretty here, sure. Here, the rule here. book is the same for all of us. Yeah. Do you think the Brands Brothers or Joe McFarland or J-Rob, if their guys wrestle and Brian Robuto – in the NCAA quarterfinals, do you think those guys are getting shooed off the mat after their guy just won? But they give the other guy the like what happened to my nephew Ian, right? Do you think they're right. shooing J Rob off the mat? Do you think they're shooing the Brands brothers off the mat or Joe McFarland or Tom or you know Manning, right? Is Manning, you know, they're gonna are they gonna shoot Brian Snyder and Manning off the mat, right? Are they gonna do that? Well, that's funny because I called them out in one of our matches. Um, the other coach came on the mat. Well, the first time somebody comes on the mat, it's a warning. 
It's a Boom, bet. that's Good it. Morning. Boom, right away. Control in that space. Without anything. Doesn't matter. Second time is 18 point. It happened three times after the match. It didn't make a difference in the match, but I just asked the ref one question. I said, hey, when did the rules change? What are you talking about? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is the rules. And I said, he stepped on the mat three different times. And I'm like, I stepped on the mat once. I questioned you. You dinged me right away, right? I said, he went on the mat three times. Where's the team point? Just curious. Well, and I'm like, no, that's the freaking rule. And that's what drives me nuts. But and I could care less. Yeah. Like, hey, hey the Bloomsburg guy gets the uh, – he gets the uh, – Ohio State guy on his back, right? Gets on his back for six points, right? Two and four. I tell you what, that Bloomsbury guy goes on his back. He's probably getting pinned. Yep. That's, they're a lot quicker to call that. It's they don't, wild, they look man. at uniforms. Yeah. Um, the Haynes versus Andonian match. I don't know if you saw that. Haynes and Andonian was a barn burner. But as soon as Andonian went to his back, he was buried. But oh, I, yeah, yeah. He by the head. Yeah, yeah, I felt like he might have had Haynes buried, right? Like, right. crazy. And, you know, like, that guy's a wild man. Andonian's a lunatic, yeah. right? He's throwing oh, he's pitches, crazy. thinking he's fun to watch, right? We, we like that. Um, Why do you guys have so much parody? And why, why can, you know, I like keep saying Grand Valley because they're a new program, or why can Lake Erie, or why can, why, why was Frank Romano at Notre Dame College able to just jump in the division from NAI and win multiple titles. How are these, how are you able to do it at the D two level, but it's just not a thing at the D one level. How can you do that? Well, that last one was a bad example, but, uh, <laughs> I won't Sorry. go there. My bad. My I bad. Go there. Uh, My bad. But, uh, no, I think it's because, you know, I mean, for the most part, it's pretty, it's, it's more fair across the board. Now, when I say that, I mean that we have the same opportunities, you know, and the only difference I think where it comes in division two is like, say, I can't get a kid in the school, but you can, because our school is different, which is, but Chad has nothing to do with us. But for the most part, we're all pretty close when it comes to that. And when you look at scholarship amounts, um, you know, across the board, most of those schools come in and they're close. Like they're not that far off. Not like what we were dealing with when, you know, you asked me that question back in 2014, you know, that was just kind of dumb luck. I say, I don't know, you know, but normally it's a little bit more even across the board, like they tried to do with football, but now with the NLI or N. I L all that's got shot out the window. It's gone. You know, I mean, not a thing. Why was, why was a Missouri, some of these mid football able to compete and do, you know, because, you know, I mean, when I went to Penn state, I think my roommate was, his dad was the head football recruiter. They had 110 plus full rides back then in 89. And then they made it where, they lowered it. So then everybody had a chance. Well, then you started seeing teams like Toledo and other schools and, um, you know, being able to compete. Yeah. The mid majors were able to jump in the conversation. Like you said, those Toledo's team, Toledo teams in the nineties and two thousands were really good and competitive. Northern Illinois had some teams, the Mac, you know, ha- hashtag Maction. It's actually like entertaining football, right? Like, right. But like you just saw what you lost that. What's that? I said you just lost all of that with the NLI. Oh yeah, it's gone. It's not a thing anymore. Yeah. Um so, so everything you've worked for for how many years that you 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 went from having that to taking it away and now all you're doing and you know what do they say? I mean, history repeats itself, does it not? That's what you're doing. So you're 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 just changing it and then but, Sick, tired, and then what's gonna happen is you know, uh, you know, between me and you, we're just having a conversation out loud. You know, I don't know any of this kind of stuff, but uh, you know, say Ohio State says, you know what, I pay to be part of the NCAA. You, you, you know, you know that, right? Each school pays to be. What if they say, I'm done, I'm not paying? You know, hey, 
Louisiana, why don't you come with us? Alabama, you know what? We're done with this crap. Let's start our own stuff. Guess what? We could do it. See you later. Yeah, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Here, here, here's what else is going to happen. You ready? You're going to have Bear Bryant tactics. And what that is, is Bear Bryant, that was before they had any scholarship limits, he would go get the second team All-American to come and be on their team and be their backup. But it didn't matter because he was paying the guy, giving the guy a full ride. What the guy care? Right? And it was before. Right. Just so, yep, just so you wouldn't have him. Correct. Correct. That's coming. That's oh, coming. I, it's already started. Yes, that's coming. Right? And it, it, like you said, already started. I say this and be like, oh, I, uh, no, oh, it's coming. It's happening. Like people are going to build themselves out two, three deep at all Americans at every weight. And it's, and, and listen, we know the, we know the eight or 10 schools that can do it. I've mentioned yeah. all of them. I think they got a big 10 Cornell is just set up the way they're set up. Um, obviously the kids got to be intelligent, right? Um, but it's just wild. You know, obviously everybody in the big 10 has that ability because they have such name brand flagship state schools, right? Correct. Yeah, you know, Oklahoma State, obviously, Oklahoma, you know, we'll see with Oklahoma, but like, I, it's wild to think about. Um, if you were to give me your Mount Rushmore at the University of Finley, whether you oh, coached them or not, oh boy, it, I don't know. Listen, you ready? How many are on Mount Rushmore? Four. Could you give me a Mount Rushmore of the University of Finley? wrestling all-time greats dang um okay, hold on can we put moran on it you know you could because of his ability but a one-timer i don't know if i could i mean his one time is very impressive yeah it was a uh, 150 pounder that went up to 167 and one <laughs> but Again, like we were talking in the stands, I mean, uh, you know, Joey Simcoe. I mean, you know, he never won a national title in Division Two. Tech fall Jason Borelli, beat Brad Martinez, beat Sean Bunch twice. I mean, how do you – I mean, I'm, we're not basketball. We don't judge just by rings. I'm, I'm talking, you know, if we're going to – if I'm putting my mom Rushmore together, I'm talking tough uh, – I'm going by quality wins and, you know, if there's a national champ in there, well, great. But, you know, I mean, I mean, how do you go Waylon, you know, three-time national champ beats Sean Silvis from central Oklahoma goes up two weight classes to senior year to beat him, you know, to win a national title, you know, Bubba Taylor, you know, three-time national champ beats a um, Olympian his first year in NAI to win a title. Wow. You know, like you said, Miran, you know, I mean, that's great. I mean, Tony Gira, you know, I mean, I look back at his matches beating Morningside and four time all American Andy Ool, you know, two time finalist, four time all American, uh, you know, man, I, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, let's just put it this way, Zem. I don't know if I could name Mount, Mount Rushmore, but I feel very, fortunate as a wrestling coach at the university of Finley that I have to struggle to pick four guys I like that. That's that good. That good. That's good. That's a good thing. Right. Uh, Ben Sargent. I want to say, I don't know. You tell me, <laughs> I think Ben Sargent is the only person in high school to beat David Taylor. It was either Ben. Yeah. Sargent. So that was funny. So I have a story for you. So I get a call from Kale Sanderson. He says, Hey, we're on our way to, I think it was Bloomington. Can we stop at your wrestling room and work out? I know you're an alumni, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you're more than welcome anytime. I mean, my room's always open. I don't give a shit if you're Kale Sanderson or sorry. Um, don't care. Sort of. Don't um, care. So they all show up. I open the room for them and I'm like, hey, we have a shower room, but like, we don't have towels, but I'll get you some towels and whatever. And I remember them all warming up. And, you know, Frank Molinaro's dad went to Finley. Really? I mean, talk about small world. Yeah, really? yeah. So we were talking. 
um, Dan Monthly, my trainer that I had was there and uh, Ben's name was on the wall. And David makes a comment and I was sitting in the room and it was just, just funny. You know, he's like, oh, and, and you know, Ben, Ben stayed tiny, you know, 118, you know, and David just grew like a Goliath, you know, and he is a Goliath. And, uh, but I remember that and it was just so funny thinking about that because all the guys were like, you know, can we go in there, coach? And I'm like, nah, I don't think they want to work out with you guys. I'm like, they're getting ready to go and, you know, just everybody out. That's so, crazy. but it was funny. I do remember that. Well, it's crazy to think, man, like, that 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 would be one right there. Like, did Ben Sargent get a degree from uh, Finley? Yes. Okay. Where did that guy start out? Central Michigan. Yeah, I guess he only went there. Um, that was a weird. I got a call from his dad. He only went there like for, I think like three weeks. Cup of coffee, huh? And I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I still to this day I couldn't tell you why he left. But the that's I think that's beside the point. But like. The point is we want kids to get degrees. We want them to have a good experience and a good time. I think that winning a national title for you and getting a degree would count as that. Would you agree with that statement? No, no, I, I agree. You know, I mean, that, that was my, you know, his dad, you know, we had talked and, you know, I mean, I remember he finished fourth the one year and then he didn't even uh, place the next year. And, you know, we had long conversations and I'm like, you know, it, whatever happens, it happens, you know, but he's a good student. And I mean, you know, and yeah, he wanted his last year and good for him. You know, that was like icing on the cake. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not always the national championship. That's the, the, the meat and potatoes, you know, it's the, you know, it's the gravy of him getting a degree and everything. That's the best. What is the, like the biggest thing you'd want? Like we're talking to student athletes right now. We're talking to prospective student athletes. And they're on the edge. I'm a D1, but I, you know, I'm a, I'm a state placer in Division One in Ohio. I took four. I'm, I'm Tony Guerra, right? I'm, I took fourth in Ohio once, right? What do you say to that on the, on the borderline kid? And how do you convince them to become a, a roughneck at the University of Finley, where the Oilers, whether everybody else are Oilers, the wrestling team's roughnecks. How do you, how do you, what, what's the spiel, and what do you even say to a kid? who's right on the border of between it uh, being a Cleveland state or a Bloomsburg guy or a Buffalo guy or whatever, central Michigan. What do you say to that kid? Well, I just tell him, you know, I'm like, listen, I said, you know, those are all great schools and I would be proud to wrestle for those schools. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to look back and what, what school has done the most with the least, like, Hey, I can give you five examples of national champs that have your same accolades, you know, for some reason, I can't put a finger on it, but you know, Finley, we find a way to do it. You know, you can go to those schools and you know, yeah, you might get it too. And good for you if you do, but I know what we have done and that we can prove it. And I said, at the end of the day, and I, cause you know, one thing that I have a real issue with, with coaches and you know, you just, you kind of hit a spot where I get pissy pants about, is I like you, Zeb, and I, I don't have to, if I have to negative recruit against you and say, well, Zeb, you know, did you hear about this or hear about that? That's not my job as a coach. You know, if I have to negative recruit, then you have issues. If you can't pump up what your school has and too many coaches out there try to put you down or me down to try to sell their program. And these poor kids, you know, there's 17, eight year old, 18 year old kids that are so impressionable. And when you got to do that, it bugs the, that, that's, you want to see me get fired up, say something bad about me and let me hear about it. You know, cause I Hello. will, I will make it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I know where you live. I'll find you. Okay. So I will say something negative. You know, about I, you know I'm half Italian, right? So yeah. I, I, I'll get you. you. You need new knees. Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yes, I no, you're right. Okay. 100%. How are you able to like, you can still wrestle with college kids on their feet. Yeah. It's more of like, I don't wrestle as much anymore as I do. Like try to drill with my kids. And even that it's, it's this year was probably my roughest year. You know, I would teach technique. I have no problem walking around, kind of help you. They actually, you know, competing part of it 
this year has been really rough. So hopefully I'll have them fixed by next year. That's the goal. And will you do yeah. double at the same? Will you, is it, can you do that? Or do you got to do one, then the other? I forget how they do it now. So some people will let you do doubles. I am the, my doctor that I'm working with right now, he strongly does not want me to do it. Doubles. He's not a double knee replacement guy. He's not a double guy, but, uh, um, I'm not giving up, so I want a double. Okay. So I'm pushing. Are you going to do resurfacing or are you going to do complete replacements? So I am done. I could uh, I could show you a picture. I need complete replacements. You need re – okay. They're, they got to saw you off at the femur, saw you off at the tip fib, and give you whole entire – Yep. Yeah. Okay. So here's my my real question for you. La like, like, how long can I hope you do this? Hey, I hope all your questions were real. Well, I, they all, right absolutely now. there. Um, <laughs> how much longer can you do this? What, coach? Be the head wrestling coach at the University of Finley. Get on the mat like you do, or just be like straight up. How much longer do you think you can coach and be effective with kids? You're still clearly very effective with kids. How long can you do this? You know, you're 51. I mean, how long do you do it for? I don't know. That's, that's the, that's the golden question. You know, I, I, I feel like, I think I've through my family and whatever, I know when it's time to walk away, like I don't have to prove anything anymore. Um, and I think when I can't, when I can't help you get better anymore, whether it be from the sideline or from physically helping you or whatever, then I think I'm done. Okay. And until so, cause I think, I think, you know, you can help kids in many ways. You know, we had an assistant coach, Kurt Leonard, you know, he's a Clyde guy, second state placer in Clyde's history. You know, he was a lot older. He retired a couple of years ago and, uh, but he had a huge impact on our kids mentally in other ways. And I loved him. You know, he was with us 20 some years. Wow. And he didn't physically get down with the kids anymore, but you know what his impact was. And, you know, that's when you hope, but, you know, I don't know, Bubba ain't getting any younger either. So, you know, maybe we're about the same time. I don't know, but is Bubba maybe get a younger kid. Is Bubba, what's Bubba, 40, 48, 49? 49. 49. Um, tell me about dad life. I saw you at a track meet, cheering for your daughter. She's a freshman. You're, you're, you're a hashtag girl dad, right? Two girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a, a stepson, but he's like 29 now three grandkids <laughs> wow i don't so, know your grandfather but what's it like being a girl dad um kind of different for me uh but i love it because like they do track i did i played soccer most of my life too they play soccer they do basketball my wife is in finley's hall of fame for basketball so and i know nothing about those sports so it's, it's kind of cool to kind of sit back but I think at the end of the day, what's really funny is it comes down to mentality and it comes down about just, you know, sheer, you know, checking your gut check. And, you know, it's funny what I tell my girls, like I have no technique to tell them when it comes to basketball or hurdles or pole vault. And I'm just like, but what I can tell you is you grip it, you rip it, you run, you give it everything you got. You know, if it's hundred hurdles, you got 20 seconds, you'd be the best you can be in 20 seconds. And, you know, just trying to, um, teach them and they, they think dad's kind of crazy and too competitive and uh, but it's funny so I you you really were grooving with my family when we were at the track meet and my brother one brother's a crane operator my dad was an iron worker I got another brother who's an iron worker just gritty blue collar guys are those your people are gritty blue collar people your people like were your parents blue collar like where does your blue collar mentality come from yeah. So, you know, um, my mom never went to college. Uh, my dad quit high school. Um, my dad used to like sneak into the wrestling room. He went to, um, Cleveland, John Marshall, um, back to the season, the champ back in I think 63. Um, but he was never allowed. My dad was a truck driver and, you know, my dad always told us growing up, you know, he didn't give a shit if we went to college or not. We had a, but, you know, my dad had that mentality. Like, I mean, his, my talks with my dad were like, Hey Zeb, 
you know what? What do you want to be? I don't know, Dad. What he goes, I don't care if you want to be a thief. He goes, I don't care if you want to be a truck driver. I don't care if you want to be a freaking garbage man. He goes, but I'll tell you what. You want to be a thief? You be the best goddamn thief you can be. You want to be a truck driver? You be the best goddamn truck driver you can be. That was his philosophy. And you know what he always told me? You know, I grew up, you know, I wasn't the smartest kid. You know, I got accepted to Penn State on probation. I'm not scared to say that. You know, I struggled. You know, I mean, I graduated, but, you know, and, and I didn't get nothing there either. I could tell you that. I mean, I had to work my ass off. But my dad always told me, he goes, you know what? If you got these two things, you'll always have a job. And if you ain't afraid to work with them, you always have a job. You know, I've kind of took that philosophy. I love it. I love that he just told you, like, what you tell your daughters, you know, grip it, rip it, do your best, put it all out there, right? Yeah. I love that. That's that's a great – now, like, tonight um, we got smacked again in uh, 8U baseball, but my kid <laughs> wanted to come home, and he was like, hey, I want I want you to hit me balls. And I was like – you know, he made an error. He made, like, two errors tonight, and he's normally one of the better fielders. The dude's seven, and he's like, can we go home and hit balls? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to go hit balls with you. Are you serious? But it was eight right. o'clock. It was eight o'clock, and I pushed the show back. And you were, you got right. it though. You understood. It wasn't me. I wasn't like, hey, we're going out because I, I I'd rather come in and start the show and have them shower and hang out, man. You know what I mean? Like, right. But like, that's his mom. My wife's, you know, my wife played volleyball at Kent State. So, um, you know, my sister in law played uh, basketball at Illinois State. You know, my brother, you know, my brother Chad wrestled at Ohio State. Yeah. Or Ohio State. So, so it's like. If you got a D1 mentality, I think you got to have the D1 mentality. If your parents got to push you along, maybe there's people that do that, right? But when you've got it, I don't have to motivate my kid. He's self-motivated, right? Like, I didn't do that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think one of the other philosophies that I learned, too, and, you know, I mean, I think this goes kind of, and, and you'll get a kick out of this because, you know, you know where you live and you know where I live. You know what surrounds us, some communities that think they're, but, you know, my, that's how I, my dad grew up. You know, he's like, hey, you know what? You ain't better than me, and I ain't better than you. Because I'll tell you what, you know, my dad grew up as a mechanic, and he's like, you know what? I get you living in that nice house, but when your car breaks down, who in the hell are you calling? You're calling me. That guy used to call a dirt ball. You need me to fix your shit. Sorry. But, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's our philosophy. You yeah. know, and that's how we grew up here. Man, you guys are gritty. Um. Why do you think you like working with your hands so much? You were telling me about some of the projects you like to do. Why do you like to just, I mean, you're 51, you need double knee replacements, you wrestle every day. Why do you, is it just something that's in you? Like what you're saying with your, with your dad? Yeah, it's that. And you know, I mean, like when people come to our house, you know, you know, we have a 957 square foot deck. That's a huge deck. And, you know, my wife and I did it all from 36 post holes digging them to the whole thing and but when people come over just to see you enjoy like you're like hey man it's a nice deck i don't want the compliment just to see you having a good time that makes me happy you know like we we built that for our neighbors to come over and hang out we built that for everybody to enjoy not just us because what fun is it that i got this and i can't enjoy with anybody and too many people are like, oh, well, I got this. Yeah, good for you. But you don't enjoy it with anybody. Yeah, that's true. There is a lot of that. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, way too much of what you're talking about. Like, it's nice, but it's for me. Yeah, my right. dad's like that. My dad's like the how you are. Like, he would have things. So oh, other I knew I got I got along with him right away. Yeah. Oh, that 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 hillbilly something else, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, I I was right with them. Yeah, that dude. He's I'll, I'll, I'll he's give the, it and I'll take it. He's the salt of the earth too, man. My dad would help you out on the side of the road. He would do anything. I mean, he did. I mean, he helped a lot of people out, and he'll he'll help the lowliest person out too, man. That's his. Like how your dad was like, "Hey, man, you're not better than me. I'm not better than you." That's that was a lot of my dad's philosophy. Like he helped out oh, a I could lot talk. of people. I could tell right away just by his like, you know, he, he's, deal, he's a good old guy where he can, he, he'll give it, but he'll take it. Oh, yeah. he'll, he'll give it to you, but he'll take it too. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, Is there anything I missed about University of Finley and what we talk about and your program and your guys and your philosophies or anything that you, you know, like want to add or tell me about that? I, you know, I don't, I don't want to leave any stones unturned, man. I'm not good with that. 
No, the only thing I can say at the end is, you know, I just appreciate, you know, keep it real. You know, I, I, I think so many people, like you said, and I said earlier is, you know what, we are all for a common goal. You know, it's to grow the sport and yeah, I might have success today and you might have success tomorrow. doesn't mean anything different. You know, we're all on the same page and I just get tired of people, you know, thinking that they're this or that and whatever at the same point, it's like, you know what, I was in your shoes and I probably was better than your shoes. Okay. So don't give me your shit, you know, and let's just, let's just grow this sport as uh, uh, everybody. I love it. I love it. All right. Coach Nelson, thank you for the time tonight. Go check out uh, www.barbarianapparel.com. Get some singlets. I don't know, whatever you guys need over there. Whatever the. I did, I did get singlets. I did get barbarian singlets this year. There you go. There you go. I, I didn't even know from, that. I love it. It, it works I, out. I Josh Jesse does a great job. Good designs. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, go check yeah, it out. Graham Shore told me to. Graham Shore told me to get them, and I did. Oh, my goodness. The Shores. The Shores are the most kitchen sink wrestlers I've seen in years. All of them. <laughs> yeah. They're lunatics. I love it. I'm a big fan of the Shores, just so you know. Good. I love yeah. it. Awesome. All right. Coach Nelson, stick around. Thank you for the time. Good luck to you. Go Roughnecks. And hopefully, uh, if, are you guys at Lake Erie College this year? Um, I think they're going to come to us this year because we helped them out last year with that debacle. Oh, that cancellation at the end. Yeah, and Boomer called me in a panic, and I said, whatever you need, I got you. You guys did that on a Friday night. You, yeah, they called got, you for a Saturday. Yeah, they called me Friday morning and yes. Friday Friday after our duel. I said, hey, guys, I said, we need to help somebody in need. And they were all kind of like, oh, I got to make weight, this and that. And I said, hey, you know, if I asked you to do it, would you do it? And, uh, yeah, and they said, all right, whatever. Let's do it. Love it. I love it. That's That's what you're talking about, man. We're all trying to grow this thing. And uh, why not work together on it, right? Correct. All right. Just got to hey. kill your kids. What's that? I said, you just got to make sure your kids, you know, like, I mean, my wrestlers, like, that's what you're trying to, you know, they need to take over your mentality and your, you know, not just, hey, it's about me. Yeah. It's not about you and me. You know that as a coach, but, you know, hopefully it rubs off on your kids. And I thought that was super apparent where they're like, all right, coach, you do it. I do it. Let's do it. I love it. That's what Finley does. We try. Coach, Coach Nelson, thank you for the time. Stick around. All right. All right, bud.